Hi everyone. Well, I hope that you are living in an area where you are not experiencing pretty intense heat. I want to just show you some of the heat that is taking place. It is 7.17 p.m. on the East Coast, which means it is 4.17 on the West Coast and 5.17 uh, Texas Central. Well, I, it's 100 degrees, uh, 100 degrees north of Los Angeles, 107 on the border of California and Mexico, Arizona, 107, 105. 100, 101, the border of Nevada and Arizona, 102. Let's go up here to Illinois, 97, Iowa, 94, Kansas, 97, 98, 98 in Colorado, North Texas 97, Oklahoma 93, Arkansas 95, Mississippi 93, 91, North Louisiana 97, uh, Dallas I'm guessing 97. It's not doing it. Hmm. Well, come on. 98. Yeah, Phoenix 106, Tucson 104. Uh, it's hot. It's very hot. Even last night in Anderson, South Carolina, I couldn't believe how hot it was at night here. Clemson is very close to uh, Greenville and Anderson. It's 85. It's only June 9. Charlotte, 89. Columbia, 84. Athens, Georgia, 84. Atlanta is 82. I do think that these are unusually high temperatures for this time of year and this time of night. So I did say recently in a video that I do believe that they are going to be creating rather unbearable heat waves this summer. Creating? What do you mean, Carol? What do I mean? I mean that these heat waves have been created for a very long time. That, by the way, is black carbon dust, and I will show you why that's important. It's an important ingredient for weather modification and to create the air to heat it. But first, let's do the weather modification by artificial satellite, a satellite weather modification system. What can they do? Well, they can modify cooling, warming, or precipitations of selected regions of the Earth thus modifying local and or global weather patterns. They can warm local regions. They can rapidly heat the air mass. Here they have this nice little diagram for what this Invention can do modify local weather conditions at discrete time 
and locality. They can create special desired weather by request. Desired local weather conditions at discrete time, yes. Um, with this, they don't even need any dispensing of chemicals. Oh, that aerosol spraying that is denied by the masses, the geoengineering, the chemtrails. It's a remarkable in invention because, well, it can accomplish all of this weather modification by switching between some computer codes. Wow, that is pretty remarkable. And the satellites are equipped with large capacity energy storage devices. Energy collected and stored during daytime can be discharged during nighttime. And that may be one of the reasons why it just doesn't seem to cool off. Another patent, cosmic particle ignition of artificially ionized plasma patterns in the atmosphere. And this invention, well, weather control applications include a method of localized heating. They can also modify the steering winds that influence weather, weather phenomena. Um, I'm just focusing in on heat. They can provide localized heating of the atmosphere. An air heating system, it could be relatively small as long as these systems can generate acoustic waves. The heating time periods for generation of gravity waves could be ranged from hours to days or weeks. And in heating the atmosphere, well, you're heating the air that we are feeling. Yes, by locally changing the electrical conductivity of the air in specific regions of a weather pattern, you can manipulate that weather pattern. Air heating to generate atmospheric waves. It's an air heating invention. Atmospheric heating. And here, atmospheric heating as a research tool well, what is this about? It is a microwave heating technology. And they can use ground or satellite based microwave phased arrays. And so many people are happy that, oh wow, another cell tower is going up. And they think that they're going to get better reception or faster speeds. We see all of these cell towers and Gwen towers all over the place. We have people controlling the weather. And I, for one, am not happy about that. So, um, yes, this paper describes concepts that use either ground or space-based platforms for generating beams of microwave radiation to provide localized thermal heating or ionization of the atmosphere. Another, well, if you've done research, you will know that this is a rather infamous paper, Weather Modification by Carbon Dust Absorption of Solar Energy. And these He's um, emphasized words are not mine. It is in the abstract. Artificial heat source, powerful heat source, tremendously powerful heat source. 
black carbon dust. All of that black crap that you see can be used to raise the temperatures. So a 10% area coverage of carbon dust provides enough heat to increase the mean temperature of the air within the boundary layer at a rate of 1 Celsius per hour for a 10 hour period. And enormous area coverages and heating rates, well, it opens the possibility of mesosynoptic scale weather modification. And please understand that this was back in 1975. They are doing it here, a nice little diagram in that paper, radiation-induced temperature changes. Black carbon semi-direct effects on cloud cover. Hmm. This paper published 2010. The abstract, absorbing aerosols such as black carbon or dust absorb incoming solar radiation perturb the temperature structure of the atmosphere. Carbon black cloud seeding makes weather to order. 1958. 1958, before I was born. Carbon black would be the ideal material to induce the temperature variations because of its ability to absorb heat. Carnegie Mellon University, this was taken from one of their studies, the direct aerosol effect, the black carbon aerosols can create local heating. People die. I saw the headline of a local news paper today, or yesterday, I can't remember. Two dogs died in a car here in South Carolina. Today I saw the newspaper headline that a baby died in a car and I can't even, I just walked away. I, I couldn't even, I don't know where. It's only June 9. So we also have global weather control using nuclear reactors. And what can they do with these nuclear reactors? Well, they can control global weather. And global temperate climate. So black carbon, this is a uh, from a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation. Black carbon climate interactions, black carbon heating. Another presentation, cool heating, heating all with black carbon particles. Ah, heating black carbon dust. Scattering of black carbon. Well, I'm going to show you what it looks like in a second, but th there is so much research. That, I mean, documents, papers, scientific studies on black carbon and We've been at it, our country, for decades, funding those studies. Uh, this is a Army document, the weather modification using carbon black. And there are so many PDFs, I'm not even going to open them. Enhanced surface warming, uh, well I should. Enhanced surface warming and accelerated snow melt in the Himalayas and Tibetan plateau induced by absorbing aerosols. One of those aerosols is black carbon. High power. High power 
extremely low frequency radiation generated by modulated high frequency heating of the ionosphere can cause earthquakes, cyclones, and localized heating. Stratospheric geoengineering with black carbon aerosols. Weather modification by carbon dust, absorption of solar energy. Um, I will I will link to these studies. And there's far more. But whoa, wow. Kentucky. Kentucky uh, 2013. What do you think is that? Is that a black cloud? Is it a rain cloud? Nothing. It didn't rain. What's all that black stuff? Black carbon dust. And you get to see, which I should post the video, you see this black, it looks like it's being fried with frequencies. It moves from this cloud to this cloud. Nanotechnology. Yeah. Clouds now can talk to one another. This is the scattering of black carbon dust. And when you see this, you can be pretty assured that either the following day or the following couple of days, it's going to be very hot black carbon. Yes, they have black carbon um, nanotubes that they can release from clouds. Black carbon. Scattering of black carbon dust. Black carbon dust. This is Great Barrington. Uh, the first one was Kentucky. All the rest are Great Barrington and it was rather well, if I had known what was going on, I could have predicted the heat wave in January or February. I think it was 2011 or 2012. People were walking around in shorts and t-shirts in Massachusetts during the winter. winter. And, well, this is April... 2012. Uh, well, there's different dates, but here's another black carbon cloud. Here's a roll of black carbon cloud. More black carbon, and it's being scattered not just by the sun's radiation, but also by the frequencies, which you can see all of these uh, clearly defined lines. That is a signature of frequencies hitting that cloud. Black carbon, black carbon, black carbon, black carbon scattering. Black carbon and, well, this is 2011, July. Uh, I have to tell you what was happening in Great Barrington. It was quite extraordinary. Black carbon dust, black carbon, black carbon. Well, that's a video. Look, people are dying. People are really struggling due to all of these heat waves. And I do think that this summer is going to be, it's going to top all, all summers. It's going to be very difficult. It's not going to be an enjoyable summer. And then, my prediction, people will be using a lot of air conditioning. You'll have power outages. They're going to claim that it was your air conditioning, and they're going to ration air conditioning. You can only use it a couple of hours during the day. I could be wrong, but I foresee that coming. So, 
hopefully more people will wake up to what is taking place. Uh, if they don't, we're just going to see more weather disasters. Brought to us by our weather terrorists.